on-device machine learning went from almost impossible to surprisingly easy to do in iOS 11, thanks to a new framework called CoreML. A year later, it became even easier thanks to a new framework called CreateML for doing machine learning training. And then a further year later, iOS 13, Apple released a CreateML app. So the whole process is now drag and drop. It now means, as a result of all this work, machine learning is within the reach of anyone who wants to add it to their projects. Now, CoreML is able to handle a wide variety of machine learning tasks, things like recognizing images or sounds or even hand motions on the screen. But here, we're going to look at tabular regression. This is a fancy name, which is very common in machine learning. Um, it means looking at a whole bunch of spreadsheet-like data to try and figure out the relationship between values. How do we get D from A, B, and C? Now, machine learning is done in two distinct steps. Step one, we train the model. Step two, we make predictions from the model. Now, training is the process of using the computer to look at all our data to figure out relationships all the values we'd have, and in very large amounts of data, this could take a long time, hours potentially, to do training, particularly for things like images. Once we have that though, we can do prediction. This is done on device, usually very, very quickly. We feed it a trained model, and then it'll use its previous information to make an estimate on new data. We're gonna start the training process now with the CreateML app. Go ahead and launch it, if you're not sure where it is, you can go to the Xcode menu, then choose Open Developer Tool, and then select Create ML. Please do that now. Now the first thing it's gonna ask us is, what do you wanna do? Open a project or make a new one? I wanna choose New Document. And there's a whole bunch of ways you can train this thing here, word tagging, hand action classification, object detection, style transfer, and more. I want you to choose tabular regression, tabular regression, then press next. Give this thing a name, I'll enter better rest, and then press next, and then save it somewhere you can get to, like your desktop. Now this is the part where create ML can seem rather tricky because you get a whole bunch of options in front of you. Don't worry, we're gonna walk through it here so it won't seem so hard. The first stop is to provide CreateML with some training data. What should it actually work with? This is the raw statistics we want it to look at. In our case, this consists of four values for our program. When someone wanted to wake up, how much sleep they thought they wanted to have, how much coffee they had per day, and how much sleep they actually needed. Those four make up our data. Now I've provided this for you already, in a CSV file, that's comma separated values, CSV, which is in the project files for this project on GitHub. Go and grab those now, use the link, you'll find it below all being well. Grab those files and we'll import that into CreateML now. So you'll see this box here, training data, and this choose menu, menu. select that, then press select, then find your files. I have them already, desktop, project four files, and then betterrest.csv. Go ahead and select that, and I'll import that into CreateML. Now, warning, this CSV file contains sample data for the purpose of this project. Please do not use it in real health-related work. It's just sample data. The next job is to decide the target, this box here, which is the value we want the computer to learn how to predict and also choosing the features, which is the things the computer should inspect to figure out the target. In our case, uh, we want to say uh, how much sleep someone thought they needed, perhaps is our target, and how much sleep they actually needed as a feature. So we can train like that if you want to, to predict how much coffee to drink, right? It's optional. Here though, we're gonna say our target is actual sleep. We want this model to predict how much sleep this person actually needs. And then for features, press choose features and choose the other three. When they want to wake up, approximately how much sleep they think they need and how much coffee they drink on a day. 
So we're using those three things to try and predict actual sleep, like that. Now below here, you'll see an algorithm box with various options, random forest, boosted tree, and so forth. Each one takes a different approach to looking at our data, to analyzing it, to figure out how it's going to work. Helpfully, there is an automatic algorithm. It'll try a bunch of them and figure out which one produces the best results for us. It's not always correct. And often you'll find that selecting a particular one and tweaking it will work better, but here it's more than good enough. If you want to know more, I've got a whole video walking through the various algorithms and what they do. I'll link to it below somewhere. It's on YouTube. It's called uh, Create a Mail for Everyone. If you want to Google it up. Anyway, when we're ready, which is now, I'd like you to press this train button because we're ready to go. We've got 10,000 items from Better SCSV. We want to learn to predict actual sleep by evaluating wake, estimated sleep, and coffee use an automatic algorithm, press train now. It'll think for a split second and then complete. It's extremely fast. Now, how well did it do? To find out, go to the evaluation tab up here, then choose validation. And this is the result here. The value we care about is root mean square error. And that tells us roughly how far off the prediction it was. So in this case, it's saying, well, we estimated going to bed at 8 p.m. In this case, we're off by an average of 165 seconds. So less than three minutes off the actual recommended bedtime. So very, very good. Now, we do have training and validation, and they're different things. We ask CreatorML to look at 10,000 items of our CSV, and what it'll do is quietly, it'll split it up. It'll use most of it for training, but a small bit for validation. And training, it'll go ahead and build its model again, again, and again, and again, make it as good as it can be. And then it'll say, I think I'm ready. And it'll take some values from the validation set, which it has not seen before, and put it through its model and say, well, what answer did you get? And it knows the answer it should have gotten because it's in our data. So it can compare the two and say, ah, I was two minutes off. I was five minutes off and da da, -da And adjust its data as it goes when it's training. So it's telling us here's a fresh piece of data it's not seen before. How far off was it? Average 165 seconds off, which is nothing at all, quite frankly. It's doing really, really well. Even better. If you go to the output tab, it's telling us here, our model is 544 bytes. It's tiny. It's taken almost 180 kilobytes of data and put it down to 544 bytes. And that sounds tiny, but inside there is our metadata, our author name, Paul Hudson, the names of all the fields, wake, estimated sleep, coffee, and actual sleep are all inside there as well. The actual amount of data taken up by the machine learning model is almost certainly well under 100 bytes. It's nothing at all. And this is possible because CreatorML doesn't actually care what the values are. It just cares what the relationships are. And so it's spent right here a couple of billion CPU cycles trying out various combination of weights. Maybe amount of coffee matters more. Maybe estimated sleep matters more. Again, 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 to figure out which one produces the correct value closest to the actual target. And it's boiled it down to a simple algorithm. A bit of this, a bit of this, a bit of this, probably equals this. That's all it is, a simple function that can put things through. And now that our model's trained, it's good to go, we can use it in Xcode. I want to go ahead and press over here, options to get Xcode and share. This time I want you to choose get. It'll save the model somewhere of our choosing. In our case, I'll choose desktop and just press save like that. And it will go across to my desktop now. We should have boom, better rest one.ml model. And that's now good to go into Xcode. That's now a trained model, very, very small. Now, if you want to try training again, perhaps to experiment with the algorithms, for example, um, you can just go ahead and right click over here and duplicate it. 
and then futz around all you want to, configure things exactly as you want. So many options to play with, it's down to you. And then give it another try, see what comes out. Is it more accurate? Is there a lower root mean squared error? That's the goal here after all. Ultimately though, you want one single trained ML model that can go into Xcode so we can start making predictions.